All right, good afternoon. My name is Justin Jones, and I'm here to discuss the advantages of wearing a wetsuit while participating in a triathlon. Uh, to begin, the 2008 Beijing Olympics triathlon gold medal was determined by a mere six seconds. Uh, Jans Ferdinand of Germany completed the 10 kilometer swim, or 1.5 kilometer swim, 40 kilometer bike ride, and 10 kilometer run in one hour, 48 minutes, and 52 seconds. Um, uh, Simon Whitfield of Canada missed out on his second career gold medal by six seconds. So conserving energy is very important in performing these three consecutive uh, endurance uh, exercises for, and they're very important for a successful finish and can affect an athlete's performance in a race. Um, wetsuits have been shown to reduce the energy costs and are worn for the swim portion to begin a triathlon. The purpose of this study was to compare the effects of wearing a wetsuit to wearing a swimsuit um, in a relative velocity, uh, excuse me, similar relative velocity in a swimming flume on the effects of velocity and oxygen uptake. Uh, wetsuits have been shown to improve swimming performance as they aid triathletes in a, uh, helping them swim in a more horizontal position in the water and the smooth surface of the wetsuit uh, reduces drag force and <coughs> improves flotation. Um, Pacing in a triathlon is very important, and triathletes must focus on not overexerting themselves on the swimming portion. Uh, typical velocities for a triathlete in Olympic distance is at 60 to 80 percent of the maxim maximum oxygen uptake. And faster speeds are shown when wearing a wetsuit um, at the same perceived effort level as not wearing a wetsuit. And for this reason, exercise intensity would not be the same if you were to conduct the test at the relative same velocity. So therefore, or excuse me, the, uh, the actual velocity. So now the purpose of this study is to use a relative, same relative velocity at Olympic distance triathlon pace. Uh, they hypothesized that wetsuits would result in a higher velocity uh, obtained by the triathlete at a similar oxygen uptake. Uh, this is due to added buoyancy, uh, um, allowing more work for the arms, uh, for greater forward propulsion, and resulting in greater distance per stroke and an increased stroke rate. Uh, Thirteen triathletes uh, were in this study, nine men and four women. The wetsuit was custom made for each participant. It covered the torso, the arms to the wrist, and the legs to the ankle. Uh, it was five millimeters thick at the torso and two to three millimeters thick at the arms. And the swimsuit used was your typical competitive swimsuit. All the tests were performed in a swimming flume as shown on the left. Uh, this was to mimic the open water uh, conditions of a triathlon. And you could compare a swimming flume and you know consider it a, a swimmer's treadmill, if you will. Um, an example here, it, you had two conditions. You had wearing the wetsuit and wearing the swimsuit. And then two tests were performed to test these. One continuous progressive test and one submaximal steady state test. And I'll describe these more in depth in the next slide. But on the right is example schedule of how this was conducted. Um, on one day, a participant would start with, by wearing a wetsuit and uh, concluding the continuous progressive test. Later in the day, uh, usually around a uh, five hour break or so, they would still be wearing the wetsuit and then complete the submaximal steady state test. And usually two days separated the two swim uh, conditions and then you'd wear the swimsuit on Friday and then again do a continuous progressive test and the uh, swimsuit submaximal steady state test. The continuous progressive test uh, had Participants perform up to exhaustion to determine maximum oxygen uptake, and the result, the associated velocity at, of which this occurred, was recorded. Uh, participants started at 0.64 meters per second, and the speed was increased by 0.5 meters per second every 30 seconds. For the submaximal steady state test, 
uh, the speeds are based on the associated velocity uh, recorded in the continuous progressive test. So for five minutes, they'd swim at 60% their associated velocity, and another five minutes at 80% the associated velocity. Stroke rate and stroke length were uh, recorded in the last minute of the steady state test and were filmed using a digital video camera. Stroke rate was counted as time for 10 complete strokes of the left hand and was represented by complete strokes per minute. Uh, stroke length was determined by dividing velocity by stroke rate. And the oxygen uptake was measured with automatic gas analyzer um, as expended gas was continuously collected by a spe uh, specially designed snorkel. Here we have the results from the continuous progressive test. Um, you have your soup, condi soup condition on the left, uh, average velocity in meters per second in the middle, and the absolute maximal oxygen uptake on the far right. Uh, as you can see here, the average velocity where, while wearing a wetsuit was 1.8 meters per second, compared to the swimsuit average velocity of 1.12 meters per second. And what you should notice on the right is they have uh, approximately similar maximal oxygen uptake. And a paired t-test was used to compare uh, the resultant velocities with a p-value of 0 0.01. Uh, this graph here shows the submaximal steady state test results. On the x-axis, you have the associated velocities at 60% and the associated velocity at 80%. And on the y-axis, you have the percent of maximal oxygen uptake. So what you're seeing here is at 60%, wearing the wetsuit, results in only 52% of your maximal oxygen uptake, while the swimsuit results in 58. This effect is diminished at 80%, whereas they're uh, approximately the same at 81% oxygen maximal uptake. Uh, wetsuits did not affect stroke length, contrary to their hypothesis, and stroke rate was increased, but the significance uh, statistically was not important at P0.07. Uh, blood, lock, lack, uh, excuse me, blood lactate concentration and perceived rate of effort uh, was measured, but no difference was found between the two conditions. So they found an advantageous effect of wearing a wetsuit, which increased swimming performance, reduced the energy need for buoyancy, and allowed for uh, greater forward pr uh, propulsion. Uh, so that all being said, uh, future studies should look at comparing to a triathlon uniform, which is more typical in races, and also keen in on the transition time from swimming to biking while wearing a wetsuit. Um, do you think that the energy it takes to get the wetsuit off during transition um, kind of negates the results found in the study? Um, I, I, I really can't talk from personal experience, but I have a friend who uh, did triathlon uh, at Colorado State, and I talked to him last night, and uh, it, it really said that the big thing is you learn, you know, through experience and how to transition with the wetsuit. Um, I would, he said the first couple times was a big hassle, so I'd imagine it, it would kind of, you know, negate the time difference, but I would imagine the more professional athletes would strongly benefit from wearing a wetsuit in the transition into the next stages. Um, did they say anything about like body temperature? Because the wetsuit would keep like your body temperature in. Now the big thing for body temperature is that um, the use of wetsuits is regu uh, regulated by the International Board of Triathlon, and they have I'm not sure the certain temperature, but I know there's a cutoff for when you're not allowed to use wetsuits. Um, but due to the fact that wetsuits have been shown to improve performance. Uh, many triathletes prefer and want to wear a wetsuit, um, but only, uh, you know, as long as wetsuits are allowed in the race. So the big thing is, um, my, my, my friend mentioned that, you know, more southern races will be warmer and then you won't be allowed to wear a wetsuit and then you'd be in your triathlon uniform. Uh, 